Hey, this is Jay of Game Dev Nation, and I was playing around with something. I needed uh, something to wrap on the screen, so if it went off one side, it would come back on the other side. If it went off the top, it would come back to the bottom, and so on. Uh, and so I put this together and decided to share it with you in case you need something like this for your own game. I've actually done this in the past, and I used a way that I would never create a tutorial about because uh, it was convoluted and didn't make a whole lot of sense. At the time, it seemed like the way to do it, um, but this is this is better. This is a better way to do it. This this is very simple to do too. I was I was amazed at how quickly it came together. So let's take a look at the code that does this. And there's there's not a lot to it up at the beginning. Just some regular uh, forward variables, some some local variables we're going to be using. Uh, I'm setting up physics. I'm using physics uh, on this, and so we're starting physics. We're setting gravity to zero zero, uh, which means no no gravity. And then we've got uh, bumper, and this is an empty table. We'll get back to that in a minute. And then big rock. And I'm going to jump right down to the bottom, where this is the first thing that is run, the first piece of code, which is called it's calling setup display. And in setup display, uh, we create a background image, which is that purple star thing. All right, and then we make the rock or the asteroid, and we're creating it at a random location and, and right up near the top though so it's math.random times 10 for the X and also for the Y and then we're adding a physics body to it it's dynamic because it's going to be moving around and we're setting a, is sensor equals true and the density is is 0.5 and the radius is 10 so I'm gonna go back to the top here and uh, uncomment this out here so we can actually see the physics body on that rock. Okay, so here you can see it, and it is just, it, it doesn't cover the entire uh, asteroid, but for my purposes, that's all I needed. I, I actually didn't want one that was the, the outline of the asteroid. You could do that, though. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, back down here. Uh, after we add the physics body to the rock, we give the rock a shove, and by doing uh, apply linear impulse, um, that's how we get it moving. This and this are the speeds that we want. Uh, we want an x speed and a y speed. And by doing math.random, that gives us a number that's between um, 0 and 1. And so it'll be somewhere, you know, 0 0.5, 0 0.7, whatever. Um, and the same for this one. If we if we wanted to go with a, a larger number, we would end up with a, a, a really fast uh, asteroid, and that's not necessarily what I wanted for this. Um, the second, and you can look at the documentation for apply linear impulse to really get the, the lowdown on this stuff. Um, the other thing, though, is, is this is the speed. The first two parameters are the speed, and the next two parameters are where on that rock is it supposed to hit where is that impulse supposed to happen and now if you did uh, big rocks dot x and big rocks dot y in fact i will go ahead and do that and let's um see what this does okay the rock still goes let me refresh it here because it goes a little differently each time but what you don't see is you don't see the rock tumbling in space so that is what this is here so we're doing big rocks big rock dot x plus math random and then times two because i didn't want to go too small remember this will give us something between a zero and one so i just multiply it by two to give us a little something and that means that the the rock should there we go it's tumbling through space and since that's uh, randomly generated also sometimes it's slower sometimes it's faster um here's a really slow one but you can see it is still tumbling all right, so that's that's apply linear impulse, and then we add a, an event uh, listener to it, and we're looking for a collision. And when collision happens, we're going to call rock collision. And then the next thing that happens in this function is we call a function called make bumpers. Now we'll get back to collision in a minute. Let's go ahead and take a look at make bumpers because this is the thing that it's the thing that says, hey, you need to you need to wrap now. And the way this happens is, let me bring this back up, and you can't see it here, but right off the screen, there is a rectangle here, one on the top, one on the left, one on the bottom. Um, these rectangles then are what I call bumpers. And what I'm doing basically is looking for a collision between the 
uh, the rock and the bumpers. And when that happens, I just, um, if it hits the right bumper, I put it over the left bumper and it keeps going. If it hits the bottom bumper, I put it back up where the top bumper is and it keeps going. And the bumpers are set uh, just off the screen so that it can actually disappear and then and then come back. If it's set right on the edge of the screen, uh, you end up with a the the rock kind of vanishing at one point and appearing on the screen or ha at least half on the screen uh, on the other side. So this just gives it a little smoother look. So these bumpers, I'm using display dot new rect, and if if you figure out these all these different coordinates, basically this just puts the the rectangles. This one is right up up the top of the screen, the left of the screen, bottom of the screen, and the right of the screen, and this bumper table up here is what I'm filling up. So bumper with an index of top is set to uh, set to this right here, and bumper index top a type of bumper. Uh, the name is top, as opposed to down here, the name is left, and so on. And then I did something called, I did uh, dot opposite equals bottom. So we know that um, if it is hitting the top, then the opposite side of the screen from that is the bottom. If it is hitting the left bumper, the opposite bumper is the right bumper. And you'll see how that works in the collision that uh, collision that comes up. And this fudge number, um, I've got a fudge number here of 20. That is so that when you transition or when you move the, the rock from the left side of the screen or from the right side of the screen back over to the left side of the screen, what I'm doing is I'm actually saying put it over to where the left bumper is. And that's how it knows where to go. Well, if you do that, then you automatically have a collision with... Uh, with the left bumper and so you have a collision with the right bumper and then a collision with the left bumper which says oh you should move back over to the right um, anyway bad things happen so, and I'll show you that um, we'll just do fudge number equals zero so it's not gonna it's not gonna change anything I know we haven't even gotten to the, the collision code yet but just watch what happens here okay and we end up with he's he's stuck over here in the corners let's try that again yeah, and he's stuck over there in those corners. He's bouncing back and forth from one to the other. Where did I get the number 22 from? Back here when I created the rock, I said the radius was 10. That means it's a diameter of 20. And I picked two pixels outside of that. Uh, that means that when we move the rock from the right side to the left side, we move it to the left side bumper plus 22 so that we know that the rock is not going to be touching that as it continues on. So, uh, And then the uh, last thing we do with each of these bumpers is um, add a physics body, and these are all static, and the sensor is set to true. And that is it for the bumper. So we create these bumpers, and now the only other code we haven't looked at is rock collision, which um, is not very big. First thing we're doing is checking if the event.phases began. We don't care about any other phase. We don't care about the ended. We don't care about pre-collisions or post-collisions or anything else. It's just... You got a collision. Is this the start of the collision? If so, then check and see if event.other.type equals bumper. And where does that come from? Right back up here. Bumper left.type equals bumper. Bumper bottom.type equals bumper. And so on. So this is just a way to uh, be able to tell what it crashed into. Now, of course, in this, this example demo here, the only thing it can run into is a bumper. So we could leave that out of it and know that as soon as the rock collides with something it's a bumper but the plan all along has been to put other things in here little rocket ships and stuff like that so if event.other.type equals bumper then we've got our function here we'll come back to if it's a bumper we know that it hit a bumper we need to put it to the other side of the screen uh, but we can't do that while the collision is still happening we actually have to put in a delay before we can run any more code on that object. That object's in the middle of a collision. And there's lots of things happening with the physics box 2D engine uh, behind the scenes. So all we have to do is wait uh, one one thousandth of a second using uh, timer.performance delay and call wrap. All right, so wrap is the thing that does it. And we just check if event.other.name equals left or right, then we are changing the big rock dot x value otherwise we're changing the big rock dot y value and uh, the the values that, that we get are bumper event dot other dot opposite so if it hit, if it hits the left 
then we are going to be getting bumper right dot x plus our fudge factor so that we don't actually run into the other bumper. So that's it. Um, I guess I, I think I went into a little more detail than I meant to. This uh, video was supposed to be about five minutes long. Go take a look through this code. I, I probably glossed over some things that you're, you're scratching your head at. Uh, if you have any questions, ask them in comments below. Uh, go through the go through the, the code here. If you, if you want to download the sample code, you've got to be a member of, of uh, GDN, but uh, membership is free. So go ahead and register, and then an email will come to your inbox, and you have to click that link in your inbox uh, before your, your registration is actually complete. Then you can uh, come back in here, refresh this page, uh, and you should be able to download the sample code here. So that's it. Easy way to uh, make objects wrap around the screen. Obviously, you could do a, an Asteroids game or something like that, but lots of, lots of games could use um, that functionality to be able to take one object and when it hits the one side of the screen, wrap it around to the other side.